Well, good evening. My name is Charles Patton and I am sitting here representing TAX, the Association for Clinical Trial Services. And I am your local PC, the People's Counselor. Uh, last month we talked a lot about half equities and some of the issues that were surrounding the opiate epidemic um, that's causing a scourge throughout this here nation, actually. Uh, we know here in Illinois we have a massive amount of people um, afflicted with this particular illness and this condition of opiate dependency for one reason or another. All right, but I just want to kind of reiterate that we are a called in live show. And you can um, call in and ask your questions. And if I can't answer it, I would definitely try to direct you to somebody who can. The number is 312-738-1010. I mean, I'm sorry, 1060. So that's 312-738-1060. And you can call in and um, access your questions. But I want to focus again on health equities because that is a big issue. And... Um, we have recently went through an election that I think shocked most of us. Um, so definitely we want to start talking about how to get access to appropriate and necessary health care. Um, as I stated in our last segment, that I am a substance abuse counselor by trade, and that's truly have been the um, area in which I focus most of my um, education, time, and energies. But I'm also what I like to call a healthy living skills practitioner. And I try to talk to people not only about substance abuse, but about other issues affecting health, whether it be emotional, mental, physical, financial, because all of those aspects make up who we are, and it also helps us to meet our basic needs. You know, so let's start our conversation uh, once again about um, the Association of Clinical Trial Services, uh, which is tax. And we are an organization that try to bring the science to the people because we need everybody, everybody to get involved in this process if we are going to get equitable health care for everybody. Okay, so I need for you all to call in, give me some of your comments and questions, and we can start to try to develop a paradigm that will hopefully help us get an agenda that we can put forward to this new administration that's coming in office um, that we recently um, chose, or at least been, um, that's been selected for us. Um, so we really need to prepare ourselves so that we can position ourselves to get the things that we need. That's equity, you know. So let me show you a couple of the slides that we have to recognize some of our um, partners that's in this process already, okay? So that's our tax slide. And right now, we are looking at with diversity comes a cure, increased diversity and clinical trials. So once again, we need everybody to get involved in this particular piece. Uh, we do have our, um, our partners, which is Third Coast. Uh, we have the Men and Women in Prison Ministries, AIDS Foundation of Chicago, the National Black Association or Black a uh, gender consortium, um, and as well as flow photography, which is me, and um, I do a host of other things. Oh, it looks like we have a caller. Okay, one moment. Hi. Hi, how you doing, caller? I'm doing well, thank you. My question is, um, can you expand a, a little bit upon what um, equitable health care for everyone means and what the current state actually is of health care for um, everyone? Okay, what he equitable health care means, okay, let me see if I can respond to that. Basically, equitable health care means that we are going to try to make sure that everybody gets what they need. We just don't want to make sure that, you know, we're going to be equally sick to anyone. All right, so if I need to get uh, an MRI done, then I'm going to get an MRI done and I'm not going to go and get a CAT scan. You know, if I need to have some hip surgery, then I'm not just going to go in there. They're going to give me some pain medication. They're going to give me what I need as opposed to what they want to give me. That's equity. You know, so right now what we got as far as the healthcare paradigm is that we got a lot of insurance companies that's dictating what people get. So this is the state of the healthcare system that we're in today is that they are determining who gets what based on what amount of money is going to be spent for that particular service. 
And we also have some issues now where they are talking about repealing the Affordable Care Act, which means that people with pre-existing conditions may lose their care. That's a frightening prospect for us. Um, if we got people that's going to tell us, not based on what we feel or what's going on with our bodies, what we need, they're going to tell us, well, you can afford this, and this is what we're going to give you because we don't want to pay for anything else. That's the state of the health care that we're in today. Like I stated earlier, I'm a substance abuse counselor, and with that, uh, we got to get people into detox. We can get them into residential. We can get them into outpatient. I've had some very, very staunch conversations with some providers or insurance providers that was telling me, based on my assessment, which I know a person needed to be an inpatient, that they was only going to give them outpatient treatment based on their interpretation of medical necessity. And we've been battling this here since the inception of the Affordable Care Act and, of course, well, since the inception of insurance companies, basically. So that's where we are today. And once again, equitably means you're going to get what you need, what not what they want to give you. So hopefully that answered your question, caller. And um, please get, feel free to give us another call. And um, we will try to kind of make sure that we get everybody clear on that. And if you know of any events or any opportunities that you can get to talk to your legislators, please do because we all need to fight to make sure that we do get equitable health care and not let the insurance companies or other powers that be dictate what's going to be best for us. We need to be an active partner in our own health care. Okay? Now, with that being said, let me show you um, some of our other slides that's dealing with equity. Hmm? One moment. All right. Now, this is what, what we mean by health equity. If you can see the slide, then you know that equity... Okay. I'm going to go over here. All right. Equity. All right. Well, with that being said, equity is about getting what you need. And now we're going to have our community epidemiologist. Very good. So everybody gets what equity is. You see those two pictures? That's what we're looking at. Those two pictures right there. Um, want to make sure that I'm the belly button. <laughs> that you see that it's not about a box. It's about having the right perspective and having the right um, viewpoint. Hi, my name is Sister Ya, and I'm here with you with your favorite community epidemiologist. And I have to move in a certain direction. There we go. <laughs> but um, what I'm trying to do is just definitely give you a lot of information for our tax call in live is 312-735-1060. And we do talk about health equity a lot. We do definitely want to make sure that you understand it. And we want to make sure that when you see these pictures of health equity, that you recognize um, the paradigm that's with it. So you see this triangle? It's kind of hard to visualize everything, but health equity is right in the middle of the triangle. And the part that I really wanted you all to get was the part where the community is responsible for their issues that they are looking at how they're building health equity within there. We call that community capacity. Um, that's one of the things we really want to express with you all as the community member is your health is your responsibility, believe it or not. Your health is your responsibility. How you get to better health is your responsibility. It is up to you to say, I'm going to have better health. You know, I have to tell you all a little personal thing. I actually went to my doctor, um, and uh, we have several doctors. Actually, I'm a veteran, and so I um, went to go see one of our doctors, which she's a psychologist. Yes, I went to a psychologist, but it's an array of different services that are available to you as a veteran, so I'm going to get all my services. At any rate, I talked to her, and, you know, it's 
complain to her about having to keep up with this, keep up with that, and being in balance. And, you know, of course, I want to say I have a disorder. And, of course, she said, no, you don't, but you want to have one because you want to get out of work. But it wasn't about getting out of work. It was just because I was complaining. I'm upset. I had emotions. I had a lot of trauma that was being done to me and, you know, on me. And, and she talked about how it impacted my health. And that's the point I'm getting to you is that, even with the elections, if you're so upset and stressed, that's going to impact your health. Even with all the protesting, if you're so upset, that's going to impact your health. If you don't find a way to balance, you will be in a disorder. And that's going to impact your health. What we want you to do is find a way to find balance. I'm not going to tell you that things aren't going to happen. And you heard that a little bit earlier today in our news, always something happening. But what I am going to tell you is it is your responsibility, your responsibility to adjust. That's what we do in health equity. We try to learn to adjust. And in the part where you see on the right where it says community casualty, um, the uh, community capacity building right there on the right, the right uh, at the bottom, that's the part where I need for people to use that concept of health equity feeding in and feeding out and building capacity in the community. So, yes, people in public health have a role. People in our legislative branch have a role. And, of course, we know industry has a role, but you have a role as well. And that's what we're all about. I also wanted to make sure that this particular uh, session this time at the call-in live show here at 312-733-1060, I want to make sure that you know that World Days Day, W-A-D, World World AIDS Day is coming up December 1st. And as you can see, World AIDS Day was started by the UN, the United Nations General Assembly, and officially recognized the World Health Organization declared December 1st, 1988 over 28 years ago, to be World AIDS Day on December 1st. And we've been looking and celebrating or acknowledging that day. We will be having activities here in the city of Chicago. If you haven't already done so, I want you to go to a website and look up World AIDS Day. Look for activities in Chicago and go to one. Get involved. At least find out more about it you can go to different sites but the one that i'm going to tell you about is the one at the bottom is uh time it says timedate.com holidays for un world days day you can also go to aids.gov where you see the picture there on the left where is the world days day symbol so that's aids.gov um they will also be promoting different activities, you should just not sit back and think that, oh, I'm not going to do nothing for December 1st or other, I mean, actually, you can go the whole month. World Days Day is December 1st, but we can celebrate the entire month. We can acknowledge that HIV AIDS is still an issue. It's more HIV infection. AIDS has gone down. AIDS is actually very um, it is it's extremely low in the city of Chicago. We have less than 300 cases, but we still are dealing with HIV, although the numbers are falling. So guess what, community? You are taking responsibilities by getting tested and knowing about your status and not spreading this virus. Because guess what? HIV is 100% preventable. But we have all these activities going on, and I would like to share a big one with you that is going to be happening um, it's this is coming to the city of Chicago and it's the beauty, sex, loss, courage, politics, the art AIDS America is coming here to Chicago from December 1st through April 2nd is going to be um, at one of the um, I don't have the exact address on me. I didn't put that, but there are AIDS America. You can type that in and it will show you that it has a gallery that's going to be up north and it's going to have an art show. This particular show or art exhibit, if you will, has been traveling the United States and Chicago is the last stop. So this is a national event and you need to be a part of that event. It is the Art 
AIDS in America. You can go to my Facebook page and you'll see the logo that's there that I just showed you. This particular logo is there and it'll give you more information. But if you want to hit me up on Facebook and that's tax you as tax us and I, it'll be there for you to look at but that's just one of the events that's going on in the city of chicago another event and i'm not sure you can see this this flyer very well but it's unmasking the truth about hiv and this is a masquerade event is going to be held at the elk lodge it is being sponsored by the south side um the south side Health Alliance, I they're they they had another name, but they're the South Suburb, excuse me, Health Alliance, and this is um also if you need more information, hit me up and I will make sure to get that to you. But the one that is the most prominent that I have to tell you about, tax is all the way supportive of the eleventh annual People's Gala with the Men and Women's Prison Ministry. It is Friday, December 2nd at 6.30 to 9.30 at the New Zion Upper Room, which is 10, 9, excuse me, 1950 West 13th Street. For more information, you should contact the Men and Women in Prison Ministry, which is MWIPM.com. Uh, you need to make that event, especially if you know someone who's been formerly incarcerated. One of the reasons I love talking about this event is because it's a people's gala and the people that were formerly incarcerated their families come out we had lifers that came out people who had been incarcerated for more than 50 years came out to this gala to be engaged with us to break bread with us and to remind us that life is precious life is precious and just because they were incarcerated at one time in their life they didn't give up on life itself and that's what the People's Gala is all about. I want you to attend that event if you have someone who is currently incarcerated. If you are a family member of someone who's incarcerated, I want you to contact us and come to this gala. I am putting the call out there. If you cannot, it is it is a cost associated with it. I'm not going to give it to you right now. But if you want to attend this gala and you need to be there, you need to contact me, Sister Yah, because I'm going to make sure that you can get in. Um, you can hit me up on taxforus at gmail.com. That's tax, T A C T S. For us, us at gmail.com. If you hit me up on that, I will make sure if you tell me you need a ticket and you just have to be there, I will make sure that you're there. I will help to sponsor you. And I also want to put a shout out to all the people, especially the politicians and more importantly, community members who want to be politicians. And as Dr. Willie Wilson, who wanted to help out those who have been incarcerated and could not get out of jail because they had no money for their bonds. I think that's an admirable uh, uh, impact. I think it's, it's, it makes sense to let people out if they are found to not be a threat and dangerous to the society. Of course, that's the caveat. But if it's for, you know, what we call non-violent crimes, right, um, then they should not have to sit in jail just because they don't have $100, $200, $300 dollars to get out. And I am appreciative of those who see that frailty among our population who cannot do better because they are constantly in a quagmire between not having money and not having freedom. I mean, we got a lot of knots to deal with, but I am excited because we can untangle those knots. This is what the People's Gala is about. This is what that comedy show is about for those who want to come out to the comedy show. And that's right, find and unmask the truths about HIV for people who want to go to an art exhibit. Again, these are the better reasons to get involved with World Days Day. It's acknowledged December 1st, but we're going to be going. Our People's Gala is December 2nd. Uh, the comedy show is December 2nd. And the Arts AIDS Arts exhibit is going into April. So you have plenty that you should be doing. There's lots of reasons to get involved. And more importantly, this is those community capacity building processes that I'm referring to. When I say we, the community needs to build this capacity, that means the community, you, need to come to events and 
participate in those events. Now, it's not always perfect. It's not everything you want it to be, but be the change you want to see. If you don't like how one of the events are uh, operating, then either start your own or I would prefer if you would get with Men and Women's Prison Ministry or either the uh, South Suburban uh, Alliance Group or even the AIDS and Art Exhibit Group and you participate and help make it better. See, that's how we're going to build health equity. We're going to build health equity in our community when you decide that you want to participate. So I am so excited to let you know that we are having this what we're calling the Health Equity Call-In Live Show. And even if you didn't call in now, I want you to be able to go to YouTube and be able to look this up online. So YouTube now has, Can TV now puts our videos on YouTube. They've been doing this for a while. You can always view this video over and over and over again because we think this information should be seen by as many people as possible. And guess what? It's free to do it. So I want to thank this audience. Hey, give it up for Mr. Charles Patton. Uh, he came in for me to, to, to work through this health equity. We are with tax, the Association of Clinical Trial Services, and we bring science to the people. Again, contact me at taxforus at gmail.com if you want to come to the People's Gala or any of the events that I just mentioned. And I am Sister Yai, your community epidemiologist, and I am bringing science to the people. I hope to see you in the future. Keep it light. Keep it right. Keep it tight. Keep it science. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, if we did not know, we have a few more minutes. I didn't know that. And if you wanted to have topics of concern, I'm going to be really pressing down on aspects of pain uh, medications because unfortunately I've just found out another person um, a father a friend of mine or associate his father passed away from using pain medication so guess what people uh, there's an epidemic going on not just the opiate use but the painkillers something is happening to us where people are dying from this so we're going to be really parring down on that topic and if you have some issues around that i want you to tune in to can tv and you can do this um whether you have cable or not you can go to cantv.org look for live shows and then you can watch this on your computer so we are moving to the age where you don't even need the tv you can watch it on a computer if that's all that you can do. I know the timing is a little bit crucial here. Um, I myself are just getting off work so it's very difficult for me to to make the timing but uh, we're going to keep pressing forward and I want you to recognize that you are the change you want to see. I'm just a vehicle to help inspire you because I am changing what it is I want to see. That's why we got tax. You see that? T-A-C-T-S, the Association of Clinical Trial Services. We are here to bring the science to the people. We are an organization that is black-owned, woman-owned, veteran-owned organization here in the state of Illinois, city of Chicago, and we are proud to work with other organizations who want to see solutions, not just rhetoric. We got enough rhetoric. And not just conspiracy-based, we got enough of that. What we want are some, some solutions to our people's problems, the people in the city of Chicago. We want to get better health care, and that's another topic we should be dealing with as well. So as you deal with the pain medications, I need to talk about how are you getting these medications and from what insurance. So if you got some ideas on how to improve our insurance or how to get to single, single payer, please call us and let us know. I'm very interested in understanding how can we go to a single payer system in the midst of this madness. Again, I want you to recognize that this is tax. As you can see, tax for us at gmail.com. And I am your 
favorite community epidemiologist. And by the way, if you listen to any of the radio stations, I want you to know I will be on WVON for hopefully World Days Day, December 1st, and you can listen to me live there as well. Chat Daddy, Art Sims, WVON. Thank you so much, Can TV, and I hope you watch this particular episode on YouTube. Your favorite community epidemiologist, Sister Yah.